Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to this week's Equinity Podcast. We are swinging up into the great land of Canada. We've got Davina Warner on the call this week. Davina, welcome to the Equinity Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm actually just like vibrating with excitement to talk about this product. Oh, well, that is great. And you're in the uh, first handful of eventers we've had as guests here on the the podcast. So we're excited about this. And um, just a little bit of your background. Um, you're out of Ontario. Um, you've got all kinds of things going across Canada. You compete in Florida, although last year was a bit of an anomaly with uh, the things going on in the world. Uh, you're an international intermediate event writer, a sport horse development professional, as well as part of Team Phoenix. So, um, yes. All right. So give us a little bit of. Uh, Tell us about Team Phoenix. Well, um, Jessica Phoenix is our top Canadian event rider um, for the past 15 years, almost a really long time. And she trains a number of professionals in all across Canada. And I am part of that dream coming from her. That is pretty awesome. And so you're based out yeah. of uh, Ontario, but you've got business in other provinces up there. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm originally from Alberta, in, from Warrenville, Alberta, which is close to Edmonton. So I ran a pony club of like 75 riders there uh, for many years. And then I moved up the ranks in eventing and moved to Ontario. And so I started competing, riding, and coaching in Ontario and then I advanced further into Quebec, into Sherbrooke and Florida. And um, I'm looking forward to even, you know, attending and serving more of Canada with my skills. My passion is to tell people about good things. And that's why I'm here. Ah, nice. Yes. And we are going to be talking about five different uh, horses, case studies that you've done. And, um, Outside of uh, last year, um, where in Florida do you come down to compete? Uh, usually in Ocala, in the Anthony region, or next to Hits or the World Equestrian Center um, in Marston. That is awesome. So for those tuning in that uh, don't know a whole lot about eventing, give us an overview of what eventing is and uh, all of the intricacies oh. within there. Eventing is the best sport. I love it so much. <laughs> hey, you, I love you don't it. have any bias, do you? <laughs> I don't have any bias. I just love eventing. Everybody should event. Um, eventing is a triathlon. It's the same horse and rider combination. So you and your horse have to do three phases. And so you start with dressage, and then that is, like a competitive pattern, in which you get a score out of 10 for each movement. You get to prove your absolute precision uh, with communication of your horse. And then the next phase is the day after, and that's cross country. And if you're not a horse person or you are you have no idea about uh, anything about eventing, just imagine like a motocross course. Oh, boy. That's what cross country is. It's you go, uh, you go uh, up to 600 and some meters per minute, which is very fast over solid obstacles and through water, up and down hills and ditches. Now you said. And so you, the, now you just said, just said solid obstacles. Explain that to those wondering what that oh, what you mean by that. Well, if you've ever seen um, show jumping with the colored rails. Yes. Um they fall down if you hit them. And so solid obstacles are made out of wood and uh, they don't move. And if you hit them, you're the one that moves. So it's like a motorcycle accident gone wrong, but on a horse. Yes, exactly that. Oh boy. All right. So the horses are exceptional athletes at all the levels. And 
the harmony between horse and rider is like no other sport in my personal biased opinion. <laughs> and <laughs> because sometimes on cross country day, especially at the upper levels, I mean, uh, like your your life could be at stake and the welfare of your horse. So you you train very hard to be more than perfect than the level that you're competing at. And the horses just love it. They tear up the ground. They run hard on that second day of cross country. Then they have a good night's sleep and you prep your horse and you do everything for it. And then on the third day, then they show jump. So then they have to have pristine finesse and jump all the colored rails without knocking any of them down. Wow. That's incredible. So I may have broken journey. I, it sounds like, <laughs> and I may have broken up your uh, smooth description of the eventing, but uh, when I asked about the non-movable objects, but some of the other things, uh, jumping over logs and different things, so you're running through water or jumping over things into water, and w- what are some of the other mm-hmm. interesting things out there? Uh, we do terrain and ditches, uh, and then also a lot of angles and skinnies, so you don't see that in any other sport. So there's like corner complexes and arrowheads that are shaped you know, almost oddly or triangular, and you have to pick the side that you're going to jump. And the horses are trained to jump with maximum efficiency so that they, you know, don't waste so much energy and time. And it's a timed event. You need to be inside the optimum time. So you can't go too fast or too slow or wow. else you get penalty. So uh, yeah. what you're saying is you really have to be in tune with each other to, to meet those marks. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, after sure. after the day two of eventing and all of that, then they've got a good got to have a good night's rest for then the jumping the following day. Yes, yes, exactly. Wow, that is incredible. Mm-hmm. So, what? <laughs> yeah, I would say that's uh, a bit more in depth than some of the other sports out there. So, what are some? Well- of the- <laughs> I think it's the best. I love it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Now with uh, eventing, so you're actually wearing pro- on this day two. You're actually wearing uh, protection gear and things like this. Yes, we are. We wear um, like a certified helmet with fast proof rating for crushing, like for being stepped on, and also uh, they just come out with new technology for um, helping reduce concussion trauma. So the inside of your helmet actually takes some shock absorption. And then we wear a, a crash vest um, similar to the crash vest worn at a rodeo or in, in like any impaling Bull riding trauma. Bull comes to mind. And yes, exactly. Yeah. And also over top of that, we wear an air vest. So if you come become detached from your horse, a CO2 charger uh, goes off and expands the air vest and protects your spine. Holy and your smokes. Body. Yeah. I thought you were going to say... So your limbs you. are on your own. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I was thinking if you got ejected from your horse that a little parachute comes out with a CO2 cartridge. But Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> Although the air vest is fantastic. It doesn't, it doesn't check all the boxes because if you don't become, you know, detached from your horse, if you're kind of stuck there for some reason yeah. it does not it does not fire but it it's probably 95 percent effective i would say wow i guess so uh, what yeah. you're saying is for the adrenaline junkies this might be for them yeah no. exactly <laughs> that's awesome okay so uh, in this um so you're using the same horse that has to yeah. be trained in all of these three different disciplines but all in one weekend yes yeah. yeah. Wow, that's incredible. It's so, amazing. So what are some of the biggest challenges for eventing horses and the riders? Well, there are so many. There are so many challenges. Um, well, first of all, for the dressage phase, imagine dressage is like weightlifting. So if you were weightlifting in a gym, you'd be building muscle. You'd be like gaining constant gains. And that's what helps your performance. And then the next day, you run off all of those gains, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. they're galloping, and then they have to be like a hurdler, like at speed, right? And then a terrain hurdler, 
Yes. So we don't even have that. And then the third day, they need to maintain, you know, that amount of muscle to jump very carefully and with great form, which takes, you know, quite a lot of build. So I would say some of the biggest challenges are being able to build enough muscle that it doesn't slow you down on cross country, but still helps you with the other performance phases. Number two would be soundness of the joints because obviously it's it's a little bit hard on them depending on your horse. Um, and then thirdly, the soundness of the feet because we are running on whatever the weather offers. So whether it's, you know, bog down rain or if it's hard footing or if it's whatever we run across tracks, we run through water that has gravel in the bottom, your horse has to be overly comfortable in its feet. So those are some of the, the biggest challenges. And then um, probably in addition would be their stamina and their like com- just general comfort in their person because it's a bit stressful, right? Sure. So we, we do a lot of training to combat these things, but anything that helps the horses be more comfortable with the the traveling, like getting in the trailer and going places, and then the getting there and being at a new environment, and then of course the the physical attributes of muscle building versus extreme cardio. Uh, that is just a constant contrast in your training that you're trying to balance. Yeah, that's a a lot. Now, how long does it take to uh, get a horse from from when they're old enough to begin training to being able to compete in in eventing? There are lots of lower levels of eventing, so you could do that in their first year over small levels, and so they might start competing in their first four-year-old year and do well, and, you know, they go through the motions, but it's not really a physical challenge for the horses, I would say, until um, they're reaching the top of their particular scope, so you know, maybe preliminary level. So that would be about five years from their start, I would say, or four. So what about what age then would they be in their, like, prime? Well, event horses, I have to say, they last a long time. Because of the uh, nature of the training being so dynamic, it's really been great for the horses as far as their soundness, if they're ridden well. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, barring any, you know, uh, odd uh, injuries or something. Sure. So I would say prime is like between 10 and 16 or 17. Oh, it's wow. quite a long yeah. time. And there are many horses, even at the Olympic level, that are still competing and ready to go when they're 20. That's, it. That's crazy. It's quite awesome. So when the horse is young, like four to six years old, there's not a lot of uh, social pressure to push them very hard because there's no point. There's plenty of room to compete throughout their whole life. Right, right. Wow. So yeah. I would uh, then assume that uh, with that kind of training and the intensity that, you know, you're always looking for things to, you know, keep the horses at the top of the game. And I believe we met um, – was it maybe three years ago, two years ago? I don't remember now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, I think uh, Tommy G, I believe, uh, introduced us, which I've been trying to get him on a podcast for about five years. So we'll, we'll keep pressuring. <laughs> yeah, actually, like, interesting. I met Tommy G through you. Yeah. But before that, I knew Mike Robertson, and he had been using the equity on his quarter horse race horses. Yes. And he said, man, those horses are buff. So I was asking him about it a little bit, and then we met in Florida, and you gave me the description of the product, and I was sold. Yeah, so I'm sure you're approached often with products and things, but uh, when we met and I told you about the Equinity, of course you had a little bit of knowledge, as you just said, but what were your initial thoughts? Uh, Was it, oh, here's another product, or were you somewhat open-minded to hear about it, and you're like, oh, that sounds like really good? What what was your first... Honestly, I'm always skeptical because I get approached a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, I, bet. I, uh, I I get approached by a lot of people who say this is the miracle cure and you know they say I, you know I want you to try this and I you, you know honestly ingredients mean a lot to me because the horses last so long I want to know that it's going to be actually helping them long term right and mm-hmm. so if you get a good horse and you start developing it you put your time and energy into that horse and then you end up you know, giving it a product that that's not good for it in ten years, it really matters in this sport. So when I first met you, uh, you know, I was hearing the description, and within a few moments, I was like, "Wow, this sounds amazing!" Because <laughs> these it's ticking all the boxes that every horse needs, and I was blown away. Yeah, so um, we're going to be talking about five different horses, and I want to take just a moment for those of you tuning in. And we're going to uh, we're specifically talking about Aquinity Horse Excel, which uh, is 100% pure amino acids. Uh, there's no fillers, no sugars, there's no starches, and there's no loading dose. So a serving size is 5.2 grams, which is uh, like a teaspoon, and you just put it right in their feet, and and they eat it right up. Um, what's very unique about this product is uh, it, well, it's very easy to feed. Um, it takes care of a lot of things. And the reason being, it doesn't fit into a specific supplement category. In other words, it's not a recovery supplement. It's not categorized as a hoof supplement or a soft tissue repair supplement or shiny coat supplement. What it's actually doing is it gives the body what it needs to release its own repairing hormones and since we can allow the body to release its own repairing hormones, it's the body that sends its own hormones to the problem areas. So this is why it helps in so many ways, and it's customizing to each horse. And um, so with all of that being said, let's run through five different uh, of your own case studies on five different horses and talk about how this one product has helped each one in different areas. Um, so which, uh, you want to talk about Prince? first sure it's it's been like just a remarkable journey watching this product have its effect on all these different horses so one thing about eventing that i do love is that you can take a lot of different types of horses and if they enjoy eventing they become an event horse so it's not one specific breed but it's also a challenge because you can get a real fatty that has metabolic issues and you can get a real skinny bean that has, you know, weight issues and ulcer issues. And so finding products that work for the horses is really hard to find. So with Prince, I got him in Florida and he was um, from a good farm. Like he had been fed well. He's a thoroughbred. He was a big thoroughbred. And I think I got him when he was, five so he was definitely still growing but he had zero muscle it looks like you know horrendous there's some pictures that uh (laughs) you guys have of him but like he had zero muscle so you know you never know when you don't have a lot of history on the horse or when you first start working with it so i started working him and i found that i just couldn't even ride him like five days a week because he was losing muscle as fast as he was gaining it and that was such a big problem because how are you supposed to work on gaining muscle without working right. on gaining muscle? Yeah. <laughs> so I started him on the equinity after we met and oh my gosh, it was so sudden. It was within two weeks. All of a sudden he had more energy. So I was riding him a little bit more. And then all of a sudden he started to just build muscle from the inside out. And for him, it took a little longer because he had so much um, muscle to recover from and uh, so it was probably about six months until he was what I would call a full-size horse <laughs> oh, right right but that's pretty um, incredible though uh, six months it, going from I mean it, mm-hmm. it is incredible it is but like for him you know who knows what's going on deep inside and through his joints that needs to happen too right. so a very talented animal um, so much potential and I started him on this. I was so impressed. And the other thing is, is I have a lot of body workers work on horses. And at the start, he was getting so much acupuncture to try and help him with his muscle pain. 
And within a month and a half, the body worker was just taken back. She said, he has no pain. He has all this new muscle, not no tears throughout his tissues. And he's happy. He's happy to be in work. And wow. that was just a game changer for this horse. So he was with me for two years. And then I sold him to a professional on the Canadian Olympic eventing team. Mm -hmm. And she has him in line to replace her Olympic mount that she just retired. Wow. That's quite a story. So he came a long way and I just can't thank this product enough. I was so, <laughs> I was so excited about it because yeah. I did it before the, like I had about four and a half months where I was struggling with him before I, I was able to land him with the Equinity XL. And I mean, his health was improving, his general health. And, you know, I just couldn't ride him. I couldn't build the muscle until he, he had this amino. It was amazing. Yeah. And I think it's important to, I tell people all the time, this is not a miracle supplement. It's not the end all be all. It's not the magic pill or magic powder. However, we hear time and time and time again, <clears throat> you can be doing the best for your horse, whether it be, you know, through the body workers, nutrition, trying to, uh, you know, with the training and all these things. And it could be a very, very, very slow uh, process or process, as yeah. I say in Canada. See, do you see that process? Um, process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what we found by adding the product, it helps speed everything up in a... You know, yeah, and so you can get to where you want to exactly. go a, in a lot faster way, and you know the horses are help, happier, they're healthier. And one thing you mentioned that I want to point out, you said the horse had a lot more energy. And um, for those who are worried about their horses all of a sudden being quote hot, would you consider them being hot or just feeling better, which is where the more energy is coming from? No, because our next case study is maple. And I've never ridden a hotter horse than that horse. And Equinity actually helped her get calmer because she wasn't in pain. Yes. So, so that's one the of the things. The opposite happened with Maple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, some of the, well, I would say the best description I think we hear most often is this product helps balance the horse from the inside out. So whatever's going on, if they're, if they're hot, then what's making them hot? Well, that could be as you just described. So it's helping to get rid of the the pain and thing going on. So that helps balance them back to a normal level. And if they're a little on the lazy side, it peps them up because they feel better. So it's just helping to balance. So that's awesome. So tell us more about Maple. So Maple, I got around the same time, a little bit earlier than Prince. And she was in all sorts of disarray. Like she had um, just poor health quality. But again, very talented horse. And she was hot as fire. Like I honestly, as a professional, I could barely ride it. And uh, I found this Equinity product and I put her on it. And not only did I feel like it made her like ovarian uh like her ovulation less painful, but also her feet were the biggest thing. So what I didn't realize is I think she was hot because she had foot pain. Because after about three months of being on the Equinity, I started to realize that she was so much more consistent and she was in a lot less pain and she was a lot less sensitive for the farrier care. And obviously good farrier care I can't talk enough about because that is honestly number one but they can't do anything if you don't have any hoof growth and if your horse has other pathologies in the foot like sensitivity or metabolic issues causing laminitic flares right yes so um good farrier care is number one so I have that and it still was super difficult for him to get anywhere with her feet because they wouldn't grow. They were very sensitive and the horse was, you know, like quite upset. So I started her on the equinity about three months later. I'm like, wow, she's starting to get much more consistent and calmer. And then the farrier commented, well, she's a lot less sensitive and now I can transition her from glue to 
into aluminum shoes, which was a big step for her. And by the time we hit about a year, the horse was in steel shoes and no pads. And we got x-rays of her foot and there was a centimeter of sole, which was like an entire centimeter more than she had. (laughs) Like she was on the verge of, you know, having a big problem in her feet. Yep. And the biggest thing about maple that I noticed as well, again, like you say, it's not just about the equinity, it's about the whole program. And I feel like that is important to say. Um, I'm a educated horse person with a good uh, mind for nutrition. And this horse was very sugar sensitive. So again, you have all these different horses in an eventing barn that need all sorts of different things, but they're all getting equinity because it works for them. Because it doesn't have any sugar or added starch, she was not affected poorly from those substances. She just got the benefit of the pituitary gland being ignited. And so it was just really cool because I, you know, I actually had, when I was a teenager, a, a horse very similar and I got nowhere with it because I didn't know about this product. And you couldn't feed it what it needed because it would be too sensitive about it and it would founder yep. and you couldn't not because it wouldn't grow anything. And so I saw, I did see also great muscle growth in this horse, but the foot growth and lack of sensitivity was astounding. And, you know, when your vet comes and gets an x-ray and they're shocked, it's a good product. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we've had a few, um, uh, well, at least one farrier that I know of that's been a farrier for 59 years, I believe. And when he came mm-hmm. across our product, um, he's like, listen, I'm going to tell you straight up. I've seen it all, heard it all. You know, I I just don't believe anything. And I said, okay, well, um, I'll send you some and then you, you tell me what you think. Yeah. And uh, it was about three weeks. Oh, my gosh, I am seeing things I haven't seen in 59 years. And, you know, a big part of it is just like you say, you could have the best farrier on the planet standing in front of your horse, but if there's nothing to work with, what are they supposed to do? And so exactly. going back to the Equinity Horse Excel, we're given the the body what it needs to release the hormones from the pituitary, and then the body is able to send those hormones to the problem area. So when it comes specifically to, to hoof growth, sole depth, um, we've had people report to us, they start noticing a thickness within 30 days, um, probably more toward the six week mark. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, when the horse is also dealing with arthritic issues and it's dangerous for the farrier to, you know, lift that leg because it's painful. This is one of the, mm-hmm. the most often feedbacks that we get from the farriers is like, Hey, this super dangerous horse now just stands there and I can actually work, work on this, you know? And so, yeah. It's uh, it's just really really amazing. We're we're definitely blessed in so many ways. But again, that's not the miracle supplement, but it's helping to speed everything up to get where you want to go in a lot quicker way. So well, exactly, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. That's why all these case studies are so interesting because it's not that you know, it's just yeah, it speeds things up. And for me, with my program, especially if it's a, a horse that. I kind of want to get into sport, you know, this year or the year after it needs to start catching up. And sometimes if you get them and they're a little bit behind physically and this product really helps them. And like you said, it helps the professionals. It makes them feel more comfortable. For me, the biggest thing is I want to see the horses happy with what they're doing. And if they're not, there needs to be a change made, you know, to something. Yep. And, uh, you're hitting all the segue marks because you said joint care, and that is definitely my next one. <laughs> my next case study. Uh, all right. You're hitting all the segues perfectly. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So I got this horse for my mom, and uh, she's a nine year old thoroughbred coming off the racetrack in Winnipeg. And she had raced a lot and had some real joint issues. So she had two chips. In, well, she has two chips in the front fetlock, one that is a bit bothersome and the other one doesn't seem to be in the way. And she has arthritis everywhere and also sore feet. And so 
I was a little disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> so I was no like, doubt. Oh, no. I was like, oh, no. But she's the sweetest little horse. And so she started bonding with my mom. And my mom is in her 60s. And she's a great horsewoman. But she has had some injuries. So she really shouldn't have a wild animal. <laughs> and I said, like, okay, we need to get all these x-rays. So she got all these x-rays. So that said, like, well, she needs surgery. She needs joint injections. And we were like, well, we want to wait on those just for a second and get to know the horse a little bit more. And so I sent my mom some equinity and she started her on it. And she said, within two weeks, the horse went from not even wanting to walk around the paddock to running around with her friends. Like she was that comfortable. And uh, she kept her on the equinity and started riding her. And she was quiet to ride. and you know, way more comfortable, not as, you know, worried about things just because I think there was a lot of pain going. Mm -hmm. yep. And then she went back for x-rays and they said the arthritis went down within a month and a half. So it was about six weeks, uh, more than 50%. So the inflammation in her fetlocks was gone. The location of the one chip was uh, shifted because the inflammation wasn't pushing on it. So they said, well, I mean, you kind of have a choice to leave it because it doesn't seem to be bothering her. And her foot growth, of course, increased a lot. And so a much happier horse, essentially riding wise, she went from, you know, like I said, not wanting to run in the paddock to running around. And I have video of that. It's just, it's so cute to watch. <laughs> and then when she was under saddle, um, she never got cantered because it just seemed like she was uncomfortable to, you know, volunteering to lope around very relaxed, which uh -oh. was just, it was so cute and so nice to see like a horse like that, that's, that's really put in the miles at the track, literally, and just wants to, you know, enjoy her life and how simple, easy and inexpensive. It has been to just put her on equinity and have her be so happy was just a godsend. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I've got nothing so else on that. So this year they <laughs> plan. I mean, I mean, it's great because like this year she plans to uh, take her to the mountains to do her mountain trip, and I'm just so excited because she has a horse to enjoy. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. is that is really something. So. So far, and we've got two more to, to talk about, but so far the only thing you've done differently is just add this one little scoop in their product of, or feed of Equinity Horse Excel. Exactly. All right. I mean, I, I don't have anything else to say about that. <laughs> yeah, As, I know. And I laugh. Like, especially the others, you know, where we're talking, I mean, obviously I'm a professional, so I'm having access to quite fantastic feeds yes. and, you know, care, um, just general great uh, living environment. You know, they get lots of turnout, they get grass, they get great hay. So that was all elements that were already in place for Prince and Maple. And then adding the Excel just actually pushed them over the line where they started gaining improvement instead of just catching up. Yeah, and you know, you 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 segued now to something I want to say, which is um, what we've noticed. We've been on the market um, seven years with this product, and we actually started in okay. Canada um, back in 2014. But um, one of the things that we found through the years, you just hit the nail on the head with at your facility, they get the best care, best feed, you know, best all around. And we can take that down to somebody who they're trying to afford the best that they can. And it, so my point is it really doesn't matter the quality, the nutrition that they're getting. It could be the best, the best, the creme de la creme. It seems as though after seven years, every time they add this little scoop of equinity horse excel in the feed, they're all benefiting in some way. And which obviously tells us horses are lacking in the, the right amount of amino acids. Now, when you get into some of the, the high-end feeds that are sometimes loaded with amino acids, then people will say, well, these already have all the amino acids in them. Well, the challenge with that is, 
if the feed is a pelleted feed, then it requires an extremely high heat to create those pellets, which destroys the integrity of the amino acids. And the thing that makes ours so unique is the combination and the way it's formulated, um, you know, specifically because we're going after not a specific uh, area like the joint or the hoof or the top line or muscle building or calmer. You know, we're stimulating the pituitary to release the hormones. And since we're allowing the body to release its own hormones, it's the body that regulates everything, which makes it 100% safe to give along with any medications or other supplements. And that's why it's so awesome. And even you get into some metabolic things with Cushing's and EPM and PSSM and all these things, we've just seen remarkable results. And so I always like, um, you know, having a professional like yourself on to, to talk about, you know, this end of the spectrum, which, you know, you have um, access to a lot of things that a lot of other people don't. And so to be able to describe the changes that have go that have been going on in your horses and speeding everything up is quite remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of think of it as, you know, if you have 10 things that you need for maximum uh, horse care, you know, and the professional has 10, this is the 11 that really puts them be beyond. And you're right. Like if someone only has five, they're still going to a six, which is, which is, huge you know what i mean yes and it, it has that huge improvement so i just love things that make horses better like yep. anything that makes a horse feel better is just amazing and you know i i have tried a lot of things and i'm not you know, either especially for uh for a professional it has to not test at an sei or at a national show right and I don't use anything in my training or in my barn that could test because two things, if it works, then I mean, I'm not going to be able to use it. And then I'm just going to have something go wrong at a show and I'm going to have to change things. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, then it's a risk in my barn. And if, you know, you have one horse you want to use it on that's not showing, then it could touch something else and, you know, affect the other horse. So I just have, personal habit of never using anything you know essentially outside of natural in my barn right. and equinity fits right in because i can use it on everybody at any time and i don't have to worry which is very important to me yeah and, and and that's a really good point so uh break breaking this down just a little bit more so when a, a horse eats protein uh of any kind the protein molecule is too big to be absorbed. And so the body has to break that down into peptides and then break that down into amino acids where it can be absorbed. And that takes a lot of time to be able to do that. And so what we're doing is we're just starting off with the amino acids and the body doesn't have to do anything except absorb it, which happens very quickly, which is what we're after. And so that's the reason why it doesn't test because they're amino acids. They're the building blocks of protein. You know, there's, and there's no fillers or anything else in there. And so but, um, that is awesome. Okay, uh, let's go to the next horse. Are we talking about Moxie or Jay? Um, let's talk about Moxie because you had mentioned EPM. And this is a horse that I got rather recently. And I actually wanted it tested for EPM because it had major muscle quivers. And got so stressed and tense that it would sometimes fall down at random. She mm. gets so stressed that she would fall down. I'm not kidding. Wow. So <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness. And so and she'd get real muscle quivers. And muscle quivers are something that, you know, if you've ever had a muscle spasm, you're not in control of it anymore once it starts its guarding routine. And so she kind of would. Um, be out of control and it would scare her a little bit therefore feeding her her emotional anxiety so there's the emotional element of her already being tense and scared and then that's increased with her physical body being tense and quivering wow so i i started her so i wasn't able to really ride her safely and so i started her on equinity and about Four days later, I got on and there was no muscle quivers. And after a week? 
just four days. And then wow. I, I was like, oh, wow. So, you know, sometimes when you're, when you're doing a case study like this and you're analyzing how, how something is effective, you, you try again, you know, you see, you see what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So then about, you know, the next day I got on no muscle clippers. So this horse, like she would be, you know, as soon as you put weight in the saddle, then she would feel, uh, physically like weighed down and get quivers down her spine and back. So it was very obvious. And, um, so then six days later, I got on and I walked around and she had no muscle quivers and no uh, weakness in her back. And I said, oh, my goodness. OK, so I took her off the equinity for a week and then I went to get on and she sat down. Uh, yep. And so I was like, well, so I put her back on the equinity. And again, this is a horse that, you know, her general health was coming up. Like I use great um, oils and um, like seeds and hay it was all good. She's on grass now. She's getting a shiny coat. She was fine that way, but this particular element was not being solved. And so I put her on the XL and again, and it's just been perfect ever since. Like she does not get that same response. And when she does get a nervous response, she's starting to realize that her body is not tense and reacting the way it used to so her she's recovering emotionally from that feeling in her body that sensation that was painful yeah that is incredible well it's, we <laughs> we've had people in the past that you know have a specific issue with their horse they hear about the equinity horse excel oh i'll give this to my horse oh look the problem's fixed and then they don't give it. And then the horse reverts back to the way it was before. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I got to put him back on. Whereas I find what yours was interesting because within four days and then you rode another however many days and then you decided to, to do your own test and take them off. And then they did. They went back to the way that they were. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's such a good uh – like I think just as a horse person that's the only way we have like the horses can't speak to us so right. I really want to answer their exact question so that's the point of taking her off of it it was to see what exactly was helping you and why has this been an improvement and I want to keep doing whatever it was even though I could have just keep you know kept giving her the excel but I wouldn't have that specific information that that in particular was the ticket Yes. Right. I would just assume or, you know, think that all of these things are what make her right. Yep. And so it's nice to have the, the specific things, especially when I have sales horses. Honestly, I like tell people, I'm like, this is what works for them. Don't stop doing that. And sometimes people call me in a month and they're like, what happened? And I'm like, listen. Did you keep them on the Excel? <laughs> and they're like, well, no, we oh. ran out of our little 15 days supply. And I'm like, well, why you do that? <laughs> yeah. I told you this is what works. Yeah, yeah. You got to do what works for each horse. And so it's important to me to know exactly what works for each horse, especially the sales horses. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. All right, rounding out with horse number five. What was going on with Jay? You know, Jay is an interesting one because he has been healthy and a perfect angel his whole life. Just, he's amazing. He is my top competition horse. He's never for sale. I'm going to go to the Olympics on this horse. He is spectacular. I've had him since he was four years old. He's nine now. And um, he's, he's strong. He's relaxed. He's mentally unbeatable. He's got all these great qualities to him. And I never saw a problem, but I met you with the equinity and I used it on print and I loved it. So I said, why not? I'll give it to Jay. And, you know, normally partway through the year around August, we have one big FEI. And at that time, I would say Jay is starting to get a little tired from all the, com all the competing through the season. Yep. And the year that I started him on Equinity, I just very, like, consciously noticed that he was 
not tired. He was exactly the same energy in a very relaxed way through the whole season. And he never had a bow where he, you know, was asking for time off or was feeling, um, you know, like a little bit exhausted from the pressure. Mm -hmm. He just kept being the same. And then, especially at our FEI competitions, when they have to do all of that strenuous activity on cross country, I mean, it's a blast. They have a lot of fun, but it's also very tiring on cross country. And then the next day they have to show jump. Oftentimes, horses are just very tired and they have some rails come down in the show jumping pretty much just because they're a little bit tired. Sure. And I mean, this horse was sailing over jumps on the third day as if he had not run the day before. Wow. I So this is this is really a case of like a healthy horse yeah. becoming a super superman. Yeah, and it, it's something that we've heard a lot and you might be the first one that has talked about this on the podcast. I I've mentioned it several times but to, you know, have you talk about this because you know, at that level high performance horses and it's like, well, what's really wrong with this horse? Well, there's nothing. Nothing's wrong with the horse. Horse is great. But then what did mm-hmm. you find? It's the stamina, the recovery, the focus. They just recover super fast. Now, um, in the rodeo world where uh, they're hauling all over the place on the, you know, through the week and traveling different states and uh, things on the different weekends, a lot of times, you know, their horses will start to, uh, winding down because they're so tired from hauling and competing and everything else. And what we found in that world, same thing. Once they start feeding the horse excel, their horses are just always ready to go. And where sometimes they might need to give a, you know, two, three, maybe four day rest. And now it's a one day rest. Um, But you even get down into just the everyday trail rider that wants to feel, you know, more confident because I would have to assume that if, if you know your horse is feeling great, and they're not tired, and that would give you the rider more confidence as well, knowing that you you're counting on your horse to be there for you. Well, exactly. I mean, you know, you're talking about rodeo hauling. I I know a lot of rodeo riders, and they do so many miles, and the horses just do that in the back of the trailer. So we need a product like that for those guys because it's crazy. And then for our sport in eventing, like. It's triathlon, so you need it in those three days. So, it, you know, that that benefit is really priceless. Yeah, that is really great. Well, um, if there's anybody tuning into this, and after they've listened to these amazing stories from a professional eventer, and they're thinking to themselves, well, I don't know. That sounds a little too good to be true, <laughs> which I don't not know how they would say. possible that you're thinking that at this point. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, is there Let an- me tell you. Yeah. Is there anything that you would uh, say to them that you haven't already talked about that might get them off the fence to try the product? I mean, we've been pretty thorough, but, I mean, just try it and see. Yeah. And you call me up and you tell me what you're – you know, looking for, but I mean, this is the thing. It doesn't test it. There's no harm done. So try it and then see what the positive effect is. Cause I know there will be one. Yeah. And that, that's one of the other great things with the product is it, it actually starts working in 24 hours. Um, and with horses that have stress, anxiety, or a bit spooky, we've noticed complete demeanor changes in as little as two or three days. Um, you get into the mm-hmm. couple week mark, just their, they feel better under saddle, their recovery and stamina. You get into the 30 day mark, softer chain of your coat, they're filling out, feeling better, starting to have better hoof growth. And so I would say the vast majority of people do notice changes in 30 days or less, which is pretty remarkable for this tiny little scoop. And just in your five case studies, um, I mean, you noticed all very, very quickly in, in all of them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's been it's been just awesome. You know, uh I will comment that uh with the amount of stamina that I've seen just in our in our three days of, you know, grueling and intense competition, um, this should be a product that goes to the endurance world because those horses need this. 
Yes, we do have a, you know, a few they're of them traveling out there. Mm-hmm. hundreds of miles. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, they need it. Yeah, absolutely. We we haven't found a, a horse yet in whether it be a rescue facility all the way to the high end performance horses and everything in between that are all benefiting. Which is one of the reasons I started this podcast to help get these stories out there. But um, yeah, it's it's been quite remarkable hearing your five uh, case studies here in. Uh, we really appreciate you being on. So, um, Davina Warner out of you Canada. So you bet. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your stories here on the Equinity Podcast. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode of the Equinity Podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity Podcast.